Hello and welcome to Youth and Sports, where every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. we feature special guests from near and far. The program is sponsored by ATI Physical Therapy, providing certified athletic trainers to more than 30 area high schools and colleges. First State Orthopedics, the team taking care of Delaware with a commitment to excellence. And Wilmington University, where Youth and Sports is produced by the College of Technology's students and faculty. And now, from the studio at President Jack Barcelona's Wilmington University, your host Hosts for Youth and Sports, ALSSM Mr. Sports Medicine 2012, Dr. Michael Axe, UD and St. Elizabeth's own Dr. Joseph Strait, and co-founder of Youth and Sports, Mr. Walter Laudine. Good evening and welcome to Youth and Sports. I'm Walter Laudine. Joseph Strait. Dr. Michael Axe, and I'm really happy to have on this Valentine's Day the Reader family. Uh, we have Dan and Cheryl and Troy and Colby, and they reflect different parts of athletics throughout uh, the last 30 years. So they'll talk about the, the parents were both athletes themselves, both very successful athletes. Anyone who's watched the Lazyanna football uh, knows that Troy's been successful, and Colby's a freshman uh, at Salesiana, but at Independence he was an outstanding lacrosse player setting their scoring record. So this is an athletic family and, and the purpose of this show is to kind of get you acquainting what, acquainted with what parents are thinking about today when their kids go off to college, particularly if they're athletes, how they address those issues, what might be a reasonable guidelines from which to work to kind of give you, you kid, you've parents that have kids with that, are, that are pretty solid athletes, maybe some ideas from which to think. I'd like to ask a question. Uh, a legislator in New York just brought up a, a proposal that they ban football until you're, tackle football until you're 12. You being parents, both players play football. I know my son started at like six, but, and I know that, you know, like Brain and Wine Warriors, which I was a member of and coached, are wait for age, where the Catholic organizations are not. What do you think about that? Dan, you played football for the Steelers. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, two things, because I coached at a weight league, and I've coached in the CYM. Okay. And uh, my kids started playing football at eight um, up in Pennsylvania in a weight league. I thought that... Um, weight for age? Weight for age. Okay. I thought that's a good way to start. The, so did I. And, and um, I thought that sixth or seventh grade was a good time to come back and play the CYM. Uh, I, as long as there's level playing field, it's all about it, getting kids' experience. Um, I think properly coached with proper oh, instruction, yeah. you know, which it's all over the board with the youth coaches. Um, I think, th I, I would prefer that they didn't start at eight. My kids drove me crazy. And at Do some point, when did, bugging me to play. I'm gonna interject yeah. a little bit. I didn't start formal football till age 12. So my first time, the first time I had a tackling sled uh, at age 12, it knocked me on my butt because I didn't know how to, to do that. And, and it was, uh, it took me about a day to get caught up. Uh, and then I started my first game in seventh grade and I started the next 100 straight all the way through college. Now, I don't think I was at a disadvantage, Walter, not having started till age 12 uh, because I had wonderful coaches in junior high. These were guys who played in college. They weren't the people that wanted to play and couldn't make the team. These guys actually played and they self-selected junior high as the site for which they were going to teach and coach and for me it was fine so i would be on the other i would say that was okay all right yeah, but, but you're coming from a totally the other point of view right well that's why we have two points of view exactly what i'm trying to say is what dan thinks about it. he played professional football right he knows about all the things that are coming up now with concussions and everything that's the one what do you think about your young kids and young kids you know, you, you're done now. They're older, but <laughs> would you still start them? I, I would have before preferred, twelve. I would have preferred at eleven or twelve. They would start. They would have started. At eight, I thought it was too young. Um, but what was happening is they play flag football, okay? Which I, I think like, is great. Well, it's great, but at the same time, when you start learning the rules of, of flag, they've no helmet on. That kids that start really are good, at the better athletes, they break down in front of the guy with the flags and said, "You're not, I'm either going to pull your flags, you're going to run me over and fall down, and then the play's dead." Mm -hmm. So it was getting to the point where I thought they're going to get hurt or break lose some teeth or a, break their nose or break a cheekbone. You know, not a head. It wasn't worried about head to head. But suppose everybody couldn't start till 12. I think that'd be great. Okay, so he agrees with the fact that the rule, if it were everyone started on the same playing field at age 12, then you're okay. Football would yeah. not be any worse for it, and it would probably be. 
just equally good as far as the talent pool. In well, other words, it well, let's bring this up. Go ahead. How about the injuries that occur at a young age? I mean, Mike, you see many in your office at 12 versus 6, and um, is there an increased risk of injury at this age? Um, no, I haven't. I, I can honestly say that the way that kids play up until age 11, <laughs> it's pretty hurt free. The, the watching it is pretty hurtful, but uh, it's pretty hurt free. I haven't seen that to be a reason. And Walter, to your, your point about concussions, I don't think that I saw that. They didn't hit hard enough to, to actually cause a concussion. Well, I'll give you three. We, we, I agree please. with that. I, when I, I was with the Brandywine Warriors, there's one kid who was the son of the coach. Okay. And uh, We know about sons of coaches, sons and we're going to get to that. Yeah. And, and the coach was kind of a gung-ho kind of guy. Uh, the kid came on the show. I, I found out he was a lifter, you know, a, a bodybuilder. So I called him up and I said, you want to come on the show and talk about bodybuilding? Being I knew him from Brandywine Warriors, where he played for five years, from like 6 to 11 or 12. Comes on the show. We start talking. After the show, I, I said something to him. I said, did you ever get hurt? I, I know a couple of times you talked about a headache. He said, I had five concussions. Five concussions, okay? I want to know See, how he knew I'll he had five this. concussions. I don't know. I don't know if that's, I mean, I don't know if I had them because I started at six. I started at the Dickinson McCain Titans uh, overall. Oh, yeah, we played them. Uh, yep, right, right, right. At McCain right. High School. Right. And my father, talking right. about fathers as coach, he was my coach all the way up until I actually went to, to high school. So he went from there to St. Elizabeth, CYO. I played there. And the only things I ever remember was broken fingers, and it was tape yeah, well, and get back in there, boy. Yeah, well, talking about good coaches, which is <laughs> great. There's good coaches. There is. But the, let's ask I, Cheryl. Yeah. Cheryl's a, yeah, the mother. Hey, Mom. What do you think about it, Cheryl? Would you, would you start your kid before 12, all you know now? Um, I would probably wait. Which I, I you know, when I, mean, I, when I read were, it, I was a little upset, and then I thought, well, you know, they can play flag football, you can do this, they can do that. I mean, I didn't play football, of course, but I had a brother that was only two years older than me that played, and I never remember hearing the word concussion. And he started when he no, was No, you younger. heard ding and a few other things. Ding, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that really wasn't, wasn't it wasn't in the forefront. Now, it wasn't out yeah. there. But let's talk about, you played basketball. When did you first start playing basketball? I played on Holy Angels seventh grade team, but I was one of the girls that just wanted to go have fun. Had no ambition, never knew where it was going to But you didn't play me. before that? I did not play before seventh grade. Our playing was, I tell my kids, my workout was going and jumping in basketball games around the neighborhood, playing in the backyard with my brother. And then as I got older, I never had any training. We went down the University of Delaware and would just jump in games. That was it. Well, that's why my granddaughter's playing sports, because her friends are. Yeah. Otherwise, she wouldn't. She's a reader, and a, but I, right. I told her, I said, you got to do stuff, you know, you, uh -huh. you got to. So she's having fun, but like you said, she's in it because her friends are in it, and she's having fun. That's how I started. Right. Yeah, well, but you also think that there's organizations now out there for younger kids right. that they're leading we them into it. We yeah, didn't have that. Yeah, we didn't. CYO, yeah, right. that was the only program. We didn't mm -hmm. have it in middle school. Or well, anything. I'm having difficulty right now with young ladies who started basketball at age six and seven mm -hmm. with their menisci growing properly. They're having oh, tears of their menisci that look like a 40-year-old at age 14. Wow. And it's my contention that they started too soon, soon jumping. And I'm going to get into that. Okay, so let's go with you now. So you went to Newark. You were no, I went to Glasgow. You went to Glasgow. So right. you went from Glasgow. And how did you get to, to Elizabethtown? And how did the school do, how did your teams do while you were at Elizabethtown? Okay. <laughs> Um, after Glasgow, I went to Dell Tech in Stanton, okay. and I played there for two years. At right. Dell Tech. And at what, Dell Tech. What position and did you play? I, I played like forward still there, even from high school. The girls are so much taller now. It's crazy. But um, we, did, um, we did really well, and I knew I wanted to keep going. Actually, I wanted to go to a four-year school before that. I just didn't know where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. So I said, well, let me try this out first. But anyway, I, I did end up kind of going in that area of Lancaster to F&M and to um, Millersville and wanted to hit Elizabethtown. And um, that's kind of like where it just... And then you went to Town, right? I, I was at uh, Elizabethtown for two years. My junior year, we were national champions, Division Three, And my senior year, we were in the finals and got beat. Well, Elizabethtown, you know, they, they secure a lot of Delaware players. That's always on a Delaware resume of kids that want to play Division Three. Elizabethtown's one of those choices. 
right. which I think is a good thing because they help a lot of Delaware kids go to college. Well, I, um, when I was up there, I was the only player on the team, and I don't think there was anybody on the boys' team. From Delaware? But, yeah, but there were, you know, there were a handful of kids from here just going there. Tell me this, how active school. were your parents when you were going through high school and college in your sports? Uh, nothing like this. They didn't miss a game, but they didn't, like I said, they didn't have to drive me around for training. I was just <laughs> like grab my basketball and go play. That's what we used to do. No yeah. more. I'm not scheduled. I, you know, no more. Yeah, but they didn't miss a game, and they came to as many games when I was in college that they could. Were they involved in your education in Glasgow? Not as much as we are. So what yeah. do you think, what made you, the parents today uh, so much more involved in all aspects of an athlete's career as opposed to just, okay, they went to your games, my parents went to my games, okay? My father was okay. still convinced that, that someone else took my tests in college because I couldn't possibly have done that well without, <laughs> without a lot of assistance. Right. And, and I share with him, I said, Dad, you're a lot smarter than you look. <laughs> <laughs> but you are involved. Oh, so what made you guys, when you became parents, what made you decide, okay, because your dad was an educator, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, so he was involved in that aspect. How did he relate to your grades? What was his expectations for Dan Reeder to do in school? You know, I know what his expectation was on the field, but how about in the classroom? Uh, there was always high expectations for me academically from both my parents. and. Um, uh, and I was expected to bring home good grades, and I was expected what to was study. Good my parents were involved. Um, straight A's, you know, <laughs> you know, A's, B's, a couple B's are okay. Um, so there's always high expectations. And for me, growing up, um, getting a free education was—I mean, I, don't, I was going to have to work my way through college. And not that athletics isn't, but you know, it opened the doors for me. Um, you know, I had my points to Naval Academy in West Point as a essentially as a fallback, and why my you, junior. Why didn't you go there? Um, I think my junior I would have, but my senior I said, well, if I like the military so much, I always can go ROTC. But uh, I, I just think my, some of my priorities had changed, and uh, but it was an option, and well, no, um, I, it was I, available to me. Dan, we'd never talked about this, but I too was accepted at both the, the, the academies, and when I got there for the visit. I said, wow. And then when I had a successful senior year and had other people that were offering me and I didn't have to go through that, right. I said, no, thank you. Right. <laughs> well, I was at West Point and this, actually I took one of my official visits to West Point. I took mine to Navy. It was so cold up off the Hudson, but you know, it was such, you know, I just felt like it such was a cool medieval place, times yeah, right. in, in England, but it was, I, I could have, I think I could have been happy there, but you know, by your senior year, you started looking at having a little bit of fun in college. And I worked hard through high school what and year? college was a lot of fun. What year was this Unfortunately, um, that was, I got to graduate in 1980. 19, okay, so you were after NAM, you didn't have to Yeah, yeah, that. so I wasn't, that wasn't, you know, really even a concern. We got to go to a break pretty soon. Uh, we're going to come back. We want to talk to uh, the two boys who right. are both Slazy Adams students, which is uh, kind of neat because uh, I like that. You had a Slazy Adams I absolutely am very I'm, happy I'm the with, only the, one with well, the you're, you're I'm the only one. Right, right. <laughs> and who knows, because the way money is today, maybe they'll change and have girls soon. Dr. Straits is saying he's grabbing I'm what we'll talk about. Grad. We're going to go to break and come back right after this with the Reader family. I will keep dancing on point, even if it hurts. Ah. My arm is killing me. I don't know if I can fix another ball. But I'll just play through the pain anyway. I have to do the big stunts. We look better than the other cheerleaders. Our tosses are bigger. <sighs> My elbow really aches, but I've got to keep prepared. Don't tell them it hurts. They'll take you out of the game if you do. I have to push harder if I'm going to get a scholarship. I'm feeling dizzy, but I don't want to tell anyone. Everyone's counting on me. I can't rest now. Nearly 50% of all sports injuries sustained by middle and high school students are from overuse. Don't play through the pain. See your health care provider and follow their instructions for rest and recovery. Take the pledge. Become an advocate for sports safety. Visit StopSportsInjuries.org. <laughs>
We're back on Youth and Sports, and we're talking to the Reader family, really a neat family here, and uh, they've got a lot of different things that they've done and a lot of accomplishments. And, Mike, one of them is... Which one are we talking the about? The championship. <laughs> oh, 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 what well, we're talking about. It's Valentine's <laughs> Day here. It's uh, February 14th. And, is and today Valentine's Day? It is. And Dan and, and, that's the begin. Yeah, 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 and Dan and Cheryl are, were talking about their first date, and Dan knew it was true love when, when Cheryl beat him in one-on-one -on -one basketball. So it was, uh, it was, uh, he knew that she had the right gene pool. She was pretty, and she could play basketball. So Now, now that we're years from that, tell the truth. Fair and square? Did he beat? Was, was beat? it fair and square? Well, let me tell you. At first, the first game, I played like a gentleman, all right? Right. And she shot the lights out, you know, out of the perimeter and embarrassed me. Second game, I started playing like a football player and a wrestler that I was, and I won that game. The third game, though, bleeding now. Uh, <laughs> she Bleeding. We're both bleeding, I think. And she, she, still, she beat me in front of a whole playground full of uh, guys. And it was, that hurts. It hurt. It hurt really bad. Yeah, I could dunk, but I couldn't yeah. shoot. I couldn't dribble with my left hand, and she took me to school. The funny thing was, since he was a football player, player he was like uh like don't we get a break in between plays uh, that's what we like, were talking no. about right don't we get a break going. right <laughs> well you know Dan, can Dan, let's talk about your football career because you did play professional football and you know what percentage mike you told us one time we were talking about kids that want to go to the d1 schools and the fact is that they think they're going to go into professional athletes whether it be baseball football or basketball and mike was talking about the percentages one time they're drastically low one hundred thousand yeah, so now you made it. Okay, you got drafted by the uh, Raiders. The Raiders. LA, LA Raiders. Okay, which is some kind of organization back then. Then you got traded to. I got cut and got pick on waivers by the Steelers. The tell, Steelers. tell us about it. You pick up waivers. What's, tell us about it. They waive you. They, they waive they, you. They, actually, say, they actually picked me up in December. They picked me up. So you get, you get, it was essentially getting cut. Uh, and uh, but I you got were, picked up again. You, you had a hell of a preseason. I was the leading rusher in preseason, but it was the first year of 45-man roster. That, uh, there really was tough. not, was not enough men, and it was brutal on a guy like me, who's I was always going to be a marginal guy. And you know, I'm a guy that you know, maybe you I'm the last, last five guys fighting for a position. Yeah, but you remember now, you had some issues yeah. with your hamstring and your quad pulls all the time, yeah. so it was Hands. hard to keep yeah. hard to keep you on the field for an extended period of time. But once I got in the NFL, I, I uh, Paul Schweitzer. Uh, fixed my uh, hip, it was ended up being a hip flexor issue with the hamstrings. It was hamstrings, but uh, also the UCLA track coach with the Raiders, he got me running hills, and that seemed to, between that and what Paul did, fix the hamstrings. I didn't have a uh, major hamstring problem playing uh, in the NFL, and, and the, uh, so it was a matter of the 45 minutes. How many years did you play? Three. Three. Three, Three years? Yeah. Most impressive, Pretty guy, most impressive guy you played against? Hmm. Andre Tippett, I think. I played against him. He was the most underrated outside line. He was a great outside linebacker. He, injury ended his career early. How about best teammate? Um, you know, I think there's a lot of really good guys. Uh, you know, when I was at the Steelers, there's still a couple legends like Mike Webster, whose locker was right near mine. Uh, Donnie Shell was a class act, was a strong safety. John Stallworth, again, another class act. And, great um, player. The Raiders was kind of more. Um, you know Hollywood, where you had Lyle Alzado, right, you right, had right. Jim Plunkett, who you know Jim Plunkett beat and, the um, Steelers in the Super Bowl. Yeah, you had Marcus Allen, right. yeah, Marcus Allen. See, it's some really neat guys. Uh, I thought the Steelers, the Steelers had was a little bit more grounded organization. Well, let me ask you a question because you know Let's we got get you to here. The kids. Okay, but before we get to kids, pro football, they talk about like a presence in the locker room that helps a team. Did you see that? For example, a, a, a guy or a group of guys in the locker room, I'm going to ask uh, Colby and, and Troy about this too, that makes the team better. I, I, think there's, I think for a team to be successful, they have to really care about each other. You know, that's, you know, and I think when you have a team that cares about each other, and it's kind of hard at the, hard at the professional level, oh, yeah. but Much it happened tougher. this year with the Ravens, okay, that, that was the difference in the Ravens. And I think when you have a team that really cares about each other, then you have guys fighting for each other, and then you have something, because that's what makes football such a great sport. It's 11 guys working for a common goal, and if one guy breaks down, penalty, uh, you know, a blown assignment, Late it ruins hit. the play. Yeah, it ruins right. the play. So I it think takes 11 guys working. As we move on to, like I said, the boys, I think that's one of the differences I've noticed in professional college and, and high school sports is, is that desire as a team. The kids come together. I, I honestly rather be on a football field at a high school football game than at a college or a professional game. I well, think college it can be there. Professional, it's tougher to get that same because it's about the money and it's a business. 
college, it, it, and it, things are changing, and I don't, want to, I don't want to hold you guys up here, but the one thing you said that, I, that I, want, I don't think you can dwell enough on is that the probability of a kid to go from to the NFL is minute, okay? And if you bank on going to the NFL, it's the wrong thing to bank on. They have to get their education and use the sport to get the education. And, uh, That's but an excellent this, point. Yeah. So, so there's too many youth people and high school coaches, especially these newer programs. Uh, I don't want to mention any programs, but that that's what they're espousing to these kids and recruiting kids at some of these schools now. And you know, they're saying, oh, we're going to get you in NFL. You'll you'll go sign an NFL contract your junior year. That's the wrong thing to be selling a young kid today. But they're eating it up. Oh yeah. And, and it's oh, yeah. not the right yeah. thing. Well, you know, you believe what you want to believe too. Right. You know? Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk to your your let's, kids about. Let's this. go to Troy. All right, I was a St. E's kid, and I just want to know, what's it like playing for Sally's? That there's something special about it that, I mean, you don't, for me, I didn't really see it until the very first game of the season, and we had a home game at Baynard. And when you, you all know, walk up there, it's kind of cool. Yeah. We all walk over right from school, go right into the tiny little locker room, and just kind of hang out for a while in silence, and then... Our coach gives us a little time for the captains to speak. And uh, you know, right around the time, right before we went out uh, for the start of warm-ups was when I kind of realized you know, how special it really is to be a part of that. And you know, they talk about the gold helmet is a really big deal. And uh, it's you, know, a really you look big around, deal. and that's what you see. And that's something that you remember as you grow up and Troy let me ask you a question you, you chose Slazy Adam uh, yes. what was some of the reasoning for you chose Slazy Adam you know, for me I I being playing two sports I wanted the best of football and the best of lacrosse while getting a great education uh, I tested there it was in my top two schools what was the other one uh, St. Mark's okay and uh, you know, I knew the lacrosse coach at Sally's pretty well just from playing travel league with him as a seventh and eighth grader. So I was familiar with him. Uh, on my shadowing day at Sally's, I got to meet with Coach Donardo and Who'd enjoyed you shadow my time with? with him. Who was the person we can give credit for finally <laughs> convincing you? I shadowed with Darren McGurk, who was on my <laughs> Holy Angels football team. Okay, as well, a, uh, yeah, he was great. an eighth grader when I was in seventh grade, and uh -huh. uh, he took me around for the day, but. You know, and then, you know, it was a really tough decision for me, but overall I just thought, you know, that's where I wanted to be, and I, mean, I don't regret it at all. You said what? Holy Angels, so yes. start back. You, you played football at Holy Angels, but also we were talking earlier that you went to Independence. Yes, I started off at Holy Angels and went there uh, for uh, most of my middle school, elementary school years, switched over to Independence for seventh grade and eighth grade. But they had no football. But they don't have football. So I actually, the year that I left Holy Angels School was the year I started playing for their football team, <laughs> coming from the Avangrove Wildcats up in Avondale. Uh, and then, so I still got to stay friends with a lot of my close friends from Holy Angels playing on the football team. And then I played there for seventh and eighth grade. Then you wound up seeing them at Sally's. Or playing against them at St. Mark's. A little bit of both. There you go. There you go. Have you, uh, uh, like you're a junior now. Yes. And so he's what, gone through the whole process. It's right. begun. It's, what are you thinking about down the road, where you want to go to school, what you want to do in school, what you want to, where you like to go, what part of the country would you like to go? Like your dad was a pro football player. He was in L.A. and then he went to Pittsburgh. Well, to me, that would be like crash course. Right, I but he Pittsburgh. stayed in the East. He stayed in the East. Would he you like to, to stay there? Would you like to go away? Well, you know, the thing that I did learn from my dad's experience, just being able to look at him, was that you know, he went to Boston College uh, to start his career. And I mean, if things went as planned, he may have stayed up there. And that's a school that I'm looking at also. But... I learned that him coming home to the University of Delaware was you know, a great experience for him, for his family to be able to come watch every single game. And uh, you know, I definitely don't want to go across the country, but you know, it's something that I'm really looking at because I want my parents to be able to come up and visit, even when it's not football season, whenever I can. And you know, my brother to come up, whether it's just by himself, and uh, you know, hang out for a long weekend with me. and. The dorms, or and you want to be able to do your laundry and stuff like that. Right? That's an excellent thought because I'll tell you, this is one of the big things, and Joe Flacco proved it. 
no matter where you are, if you're a good talent, they're going to find you. you I went found from Boston College to the <laughs> University of Delaware, and the NFL found you. So wherever you go, there has to be those decisions in there about family, how close your brother is, how close your parents are. So it's a, it's a good way to look at it. Dan, I saw Mike took me to a game, University of Delaware game. I saw Flacco throw two or three passes. I looked at him and I said, he's a first-round draft choice. We bet on it. We bet on it. I was so happy to see what him win. What don't you guys bet on? Oh, we don't bet. We don't bet. <laughs> on the show, we don't bet. But I'll tell you, sometimes I wonder about some of these uh, scouts that, you know, they either got to be blind or they're not paying attention. But you see it all the time when you were drafted. Some of the draft choices that came in, they couldn't play. You know, they flat out couldn't play. It's not exact science. You're, exactly. Let's talk about a little bit more of exact science. So, Troy, you played a lot of different positions. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, coaches, that's good. The coaches have asked him to play quarterback. They've asked him to play running back. They've asked him to play defensive line as a stand-up linebacker and as a, as a center linebacker, okay? Yes. What do you enjoy playing the most? Uh, you know, linebacker is the position that I'm going to pursue in college. Yeah, you look like Because you right. feel that <laughs> you're physically, that's the right position for you because you just think that that's the best position you would. <laughs> if you were a 4-4-40 four, four, guy instead of a little slower than that, okay, would you want to be a running back or a fullback? You know, I, I still like defense. Okay. Uh, the you just like to be a 4-4 four, four linebacker. Give punishment, don't yeah, get that punishment. Nice. Isn't that a... Hey, I'll tell you what, you've you got to like Don't defense to be a, a good defensive player. Yes. And you can see, if, if one of the things that you'll notice uh, when you watch professional football and college football, defensive players make a difference. And they're getting more and more noticed because it looks like they have longer careers and it looks like they're, you know, they're game breakers. I, yeah. I still think that, that a, uh, a cornerback and a safety are toughest position in football to play. Well, I don't think the safety's the toughest, but well, I sure think quarterback is. Yeah. You're an island, the, right? Oh, we got 30 seconds in this segment. We're having a great time with the reader so family. Let's, so let's go with, with one more question, Troy. So, therefore, you think your linebacker is what you'd like to play Correct. at the next level. Uh, what do you think you'll have to get a little better at to play at, say, a Penn State? You can think about that because we're going to go to a break and go back after that. But that was the question we're going to come back to. We're going to go to a break. We're here with the reader family on... Uh, on Valentine's Day, right after this. What does opportunity mean to you? At Wilmington University, it means providing a personalized educational experience where students learn anywhere at any time. Wilmington University provides a variety of ways to complete your degree. Choose the flexibility of online learning or attend classes during the day, in the evening, or on weekends at locations throughout the region. It's your degree. Choose how you earn it. Personalized education. Affordable tuition. That's the difference at Wilmington University. opportunity mean to you? At Wilmington University, it means finding an innovative degree program that fits your goals and prepares you for a successful career. It means finding a school that fits your life. We know the importance of providing individual attention, affordable tuition, and unparalleled flexibility and service. Because at Wilmington University, it's not about meeting your expectations, it's about exceeding them. Personalized education, affordable tuition, that's the difference at Wilmington University. We're back on Youth and Sports, and we're having a great time with the Reader family, learning a lot of stuff about uh, the insides of uh, parental decisions on sports, which is uh, what we're talking about, really. And we're talking to, looks like a D1 recruit. Uh, he's uh, Troy Reader, and he's at Slazy Adam. He's a junior. And you look like, you know, the prolific linebacker. I mean, is that what... 
the coaches are saying that you should project yourself, even though you, you know, a lot of times you like playing a certain position, but the coaches are saying, hey, look, you know, you're not this, you're that. Is that your choice or the coach is saying, hey, you're a great linebacker, that's what you can concentrate on? You know, I'm, the thing is with um, some of my game film, I've been able to play, like Dr. X said, I've been able to play defensive line uh, at the defensive end position. I've been able to go back to some safety and play there. But defensively and just it, through the recruiting process, every school has pretty much come back to me as a linebacker, linebacker, which is my main position that I play in. Well, it's unique uh, that you get a chance to play all these positions because most kids do not. I mean, yes. the fact you have to be very talented, especially to school like Slays Adam, to say, oh, look, we're going to play here, 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 and here. And that's very rare. What was very impressive was the fact that he was a quarterback as a freshman. Absolutely. That Absolutely. is an unusual skill set. All right, so we've already tried. You're going to Virginia this weekend to visit. Yes. That's a pretty big lacrosse school. Yes. <laughs> are you are you going there because you would like to play two sports in college? That you would like to play both football and lacrosse? No. <laughs> it's a little much for me. You know, we had the Bergie family Good on, and, I, and they were, you know, he played, the, the one son played professional lacrosse. Yes. And here's Bergie, you know, football. And I looked at him, I'm going to say the same thing to your dad as I said to Bergie. I said, hey, you know, money, money, money. I mean, you don't get, what, a ham sandwich for playing lacrosse. <laughs> You know, there's 25 people in the stands. What are you going to do? You know, I want my sons to, to be play happy. the sports they want to play in college. There and you go. College to get it. it will, the sports will open some doors for them, get them into schools they might not otherwise got into. Sure. Uh, I, don't, I think, we'll get back to what we said earlier, the probability of playing the professional level, I think it's something you aspire to do, but you can't, the probability is you won't, you won't make it there. So if, you, if you're good enough to make it great, but you know, you better have an education to fall back upon. It's more likely you're going to be a pro doc than a pro right, athlete. That's right, that's right. I agree with 100%. Well, what are your aspirations outside the sports arena? What would you uh, like to do? Uh, well, we're at my college of choice. I would like to get into their business school, uh, whether it's a four year or a two year, and uh, you know, go through that whole program. And uh, yeah, but let's dream big. What would you like to be? Would you like to be <laughs> CEO of Dupont? What would you like to do? You know, I think the long run, I'd like to do something either uh, start something of my own or okay. start up partner with my brother, or start up with my dad as I come out of. Oh, that's kind of cool. And uh, I like maybe that. things that I've talked about with my dad is start off in a bigger scene, like a, a bigger like a city. Like a Xerox or something. Well, big, uh, in a bigger well, city. Well, what are you looking to do? Are you looking to like manage money from uh, some, a business maybe standpoint? Like or? eventually into developing. Real estate. Or real estate, oh. yes. And then, well, I was in real estate for, I don't know, 15 years. And one of the things I love is when you're coming from L.A. to Pittsburgh. And if I was a realtor in Pittsburgh, I love that. You know, hey, look what you can get in Pittsburgh, what you couldn't get in L.A. Well, let's talk to your brother. Let's yeah, find let's out where he's Colby. coming from. Yeah. Now we got Colby Reader, who was the all-time independent point scorer in lacrosse at Independence. And now he's playing football and cross at the Slays the Adam. Yes. How do you like Slays the Atom, uh, Colby? It's great. Um, there really is like a brotherhood and a bond between all of us there. Does, does your brother being a star there have any effect on you? Um, I actually think it's a good effect. I like it a uh, I would think lot. it would be too. Like all the teachers know me and uh, other students know me because I'm Troy's brother, which I like. And um, it... It uh, helps me, it gives me goals, and uh, I enjoy cheering for my brother. What do you play in lacrosse? Midfield. Okay. And Troy, are you playing defense or are you play midi? I play midfield also. Okay. So this year you're going to have, your brother will be a junior, you'll be a freshman. Yeah. I haven't seen a whole lot of freshmen be able to move up to varsity to get a chance to play at that level. You're much better playing at JB and playing than you are watching but I imagine your goal would be when you're, you're a sophomore and he's a senior that you're on the same attack or the same midfield line. Yes, definitely. That would be exciting as a well, parent. Tell me this. He'll, what he'll was it like to be a varsity this year? Varsity player. <laughs> hmm? He'll most likely get a lot of time this year as a varsity player. That's all. Great. Well, that's because he's a good player. You yes. know, and the, but Salesianum, it's nice to shoot for that, but I would much right. rather see you play a lot as a, as a JV player 
than to not get to be on the third line of the midfield lines. Uh, I think he expects to be in the second line of midfield, which will get a lot of action. Uh, what about wow. from your mouth? That would be yep. great. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to know this yeah. from both of you. What was yeah. it like growing up together? I mean, you guys played sports the whole time. You, did you guys hang out a lot? Were you guys close? Was there a lot of fighting like a lot of brothers do? Or how well, was that? You know, for me. Did you break a lot of furniture, like the house? <laughs> Not too much. No broken bones either. Not in no. the house. Yeah. <laughs> Between the two of you. Yeah. But uh, you know, the thing that's been really weird is that as close as we are in age, um, most organizations are paired in like years of two, so 11, 12, 13, 14. That we always miss the cutoff, so although we've been so close in age, until this year in football, on the varsity football team at Sally's, we had only been on one team together, and that was our first year ever playing lacrosse. And I was in uh, third grade, and he was in kindergarten. Oh, so, cool. Wow. And now we're back together again, even though we've trained together, lifted together, um, skill specifically trained for lacrosse and football. Um, you know, this is the first time we've really been able to experience playing together. That, that's exciting. Colby, you know, there's no doubt that there's a, uh, when you first come as a freshman to Sally's, they treat freshmen a little differently than they treat upperclassmen, okay? Do you think they were harder on you or easier on you as a freshman with your brother being Troy? Uh, I think they were uh, a little bit easier on me. I think they had higher expectations, but I like How about your classmates, though, the upperclassmen, the juniors and seniors at the school? Were they, they a little tough on you as they, as they tend to be on freshmen? A little bit, like joking around, though. Yeah, they know they're going to have to face his brother. That's exactly what my thought was. But be. you make a good point because you talk about being a special athlete, and I actually looked at Sally's. Uh, that my father went there. I looked at Sally's. I went over. I spoke to their baseball coach at the time, and he directly told me, "We don't play fresh. We don't play. We don't play freshman well, you're baseball lucky players you play here." For him. So I was like, "Whoa! If I'm good enough, so I decided to go to St. Elizabeth's. But to have two of you guys, am I correct? You started." Football as a freshman. Yes. And it sounds like you're going to be starting lacrosse as a freshman on one of the lines. So, Colby, I mean, that's excellent. Colby, what are you playing football position? Uh, defensive back and running back. Okay, what's your favorite position? You like him? Are you defensive oriented? Or? Uh, I enjoy both, but I like defense better also. Okay. Do you okay. think that uh, right now is Troy a little faster than you? Yes, a little bit. Okay. Do you <laughs> think that by the time you're his age, though, you'll get that step? Hopefully. <laughs> is your favorite lacrosse or football? They're about even. Um, I haven't decided yet. But Okay, if you, right now, if you were to get a college scholarship, would you like it in football or lacrosse? I'd probably rather play football. Okay. What about you? You know, so If I you had a chance to get the same college scholarship for each sport, same money, same everything, what would you take? No, I think just only one. <laughs> Just because of how we've been brought up and just what we've been around the most has been football and you know that's it's been great going back to University of Delaware and seeing where my dad's come from and everything and that you know I think right now football is probably my number one thing but you know, now when to you change. if you go to a major school which it sounds like you're going He's to going to a major school they're not gonna tell you oh yeah go ahead and play lacrosse too. No, I think we asked that earlier. He's decided he that he's going to just play football. Right. That yeah. one sport is that's, enough, and, and, and I totally help understand. Him they education. wanted me to play football and wrestle, and I said, no, that's not happening. Well, you know, your, your education is the most important thing, and the fact is, I mean, football is like a job. Right. I mean, any oh, yeah. sport in college, any major sport, it's like a job. All right, so who do you think makes more? So if you added up all your hours as a football player, all the hours you spend training, all the hours you spend playing, all the hours you spend on the road away from your, your work, who do you think makes more per hour, the football player or the person who works as a student in the cafeteria? It's the person who works in the cafeteria. I added it up. It's amazing. When I was going to school, they got paid $1.75 an hour, and I got paid $1.35. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're working your way through college. You're, you're definitely working your way through college. It is, a, it is a job. Now, when you leave there, knowing that, knowing that you've put in all those hours, one of the, one of the things I like that, to ask young people when they've finished is, if you had a million dollars, 
okay? That it just, you lucked out and it just came floating down. And you could give it to any organization you wanted to give it to, okay? Who would you give it to and what would you give it for? Now, until the last year, it would have been to Sally's for their weight room, but now it is absolutely such a gorgeous facility that, uh, that your, your father and I would have loved to have a place like that to exercise it. <laughs> Colby, you lucked out, brother. You got to go when it, when it opened the door. Did it, like, say, you had, had you seen Sally's before the weight room? Uh, no. Uh, I knew it was coming my freshman year, and that was a big factor in going there. It's just a great facility. What about that question uh, Mike just asked you about? What would you got a million dollars, what would you give the money right now? Uh, probably the Holy Angels. For what? Football, sports. Okay, it's give it to the sport. Give not the whole facilities, million. Facilities, facilities. You know, like tithe, ten percent, hundred grand. You give it. You give it to Holy Angels, and you <laughs> say, "I'd like this to go to the sports program." How about you, Troy? Yeah, I think I'd give it back to Sally's just because. You know, I think right now their facilities and everything are great, but I would like to see more kids that would like to go to Sally's have an opportunity to go. be able to get in. Like a sports scholarship. How about this? Right. You think if Access. you had the money and a bunch of people that had that money that they should buy Baynard Stadium, it should be Sally Stadium? Yeah. I like that idea. I would really like that because, you know. Fix it up. Put some right. Wow. Yeah, yeah, fix it up. Cover it. That would be great. That's probably the only thing you're missing, correct? Right. You're missing your own football. Do you mind sharing yes. it with other people? Yeah, for me, it it's such a special place and something that I'm just always going to remember. Those night games there. That, oh yeah. But you don't have, mind the fact that, that other people use it because it really <laughs> is impacting you, right? I mean, you're not using it all the time. If it was sprint turf, I really could care less. But the fact that you know, right? It's great. Some years, down this little. past year wasn't too bad, but it's a tough in a year job where there's a little it. bit more rain and there's sometimes a Definitely. Friday night game, a Saturday have, afternoon game. I have to yeah. tell you a cute story. It's the state finals and it's a deluge and we got 10 seconds and I lost my shoe and they sent it back to me in the spring when they redid the surface. <laughs> we'll go to a break right after this. I know they never make me play with these guys, but why do they make me train like them? Training hard is important, and for professional athletes, it's their job. But kids aren't professionals and shouldn't train at that level. Keep kids safe on the playing field and out of the operating room. Become an advocate for sports safety. Visit StopSportsInjuries.org. Hi, we're back on Youth in Sports with the Reader family and uh, just having a good time and, and trying to figure out where uh, Troy's going to go to college and where, what Colby wants to do. And uh, the mother, Cheryl, is an uh, uh, English Town basketball player. And Elizabeth Dan, Town. Elizabeth Town. What did I say, English Town? You did. Elizabeth Town. And Dan Reader, former Pittsburgh Steeler, University of Delaware, Boston College, done it all. We're having a wonderful time asking them some cool questions. And you got something I, in the well, box here? Yeah, I, I mean, we talk about sports all the time on here, and a lot of us Youth know now. Sports, I, right? I understand that, but we've found out even from an NFL football player that education is important. Oh, absolutely. And I, I want to ask both parents. I'm, I have a five-year-old, and I kind of brought this up to you guys even before the show, and I'd like to know what 
what was the curriculums and stuff that made you guys go where you did? It was Holy Angels and then uh, to Independence and then off to Sally's. So just tell me about that process. You know, one thing I do want to say is it didn't really matter what school, but we always told the kids, you know, as they were getting older and really, you know, soaking up the sports and really enjoying it, we said there are so many athletes out there. And one of the ways you can keep yourself, you know, apart is to be a good student and a good athlete. And a good kid, which and they are. a good person. Right. And, um, you know, I think we took a good path, but it may not have worked for anybody else. But we did want them to know that, you know, it wasn't all about sports. And luckily, you know, we're seeing the results with Troy. Um, he doesn't uh, sound like Colby's grades, too far behind. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he'll be fine also. But you do every once in a while hear of a good athlete that can't get in the school of their choice. Oh, we've had of some of them on the show. Yeah. Tons yeah. of them. Well, let's go with the fact that you both were smart people who put, were good athletes. Was your expectation that your offspring were going to be smart kids with good athletes? I didn't think about it. I know he did. You know, <laughs> you know, I, know. I mean, sports are such a, I mean, they, they were such a uh, big part of my life. And I, and I look at whatever success I've had in business, I... I my experiences on the football field, I use every single day. You know, you know what? And you, Mike could probably say the same thing. You, I, every you said day. the keynote, I think. Like, I got drafted, okay? And there was a lot not of kids. Not by the NFL. Not by the NFL. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of kids. Uncle Sam. <laughs> and it was our army. A lot of kids that, that, you know, oh, my God, it's the worst thing that ever happened to me in my life. I hate it. And they were going to waste two years of their life being negative. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make this a positive experience. And I did. And just like you said, out of the NFL, you know, it was a tough grind and doggy dog. You took good stuff out of it. And I did the same thing from the Army, which I think helped me in my career. And I think as a father and a mother, we just want to, the one thing that I tell my kids that is in your control, and that is how hard you work. God gives you so much talent, and he gives you so many smarts. And what will define you and what will make you successful isn't necessarily the smartest guy in the world. It's how hard you work and don't be outworked. One of the best and trainers in thoroughbred racing, D. Wayne Lucas, he's 80, 80 years old now, still training winners. And he says to all his assistants that went on to greatness, he said, look, you might, they might have better stock than you. They might have better owners than you. But don't ever let them outwork you. Right. And that's his philosophy at 80, still gets to barn 4.30 in the morning. So I think it control. In the household when they were younger, and it, you kind of brought some of this up, you're both great athletes. So was there one that was more pushing towards the education, one that did more educational, one that did more sports, or was it a combined effort? I, I think Cheryl's more on the education. We, she's we, unbelievable. She's on them. She's, we just, it right. kind of happened, though. Yeah. It wasn't like, yeah. I'll take care of this, I'll take care of that, because... Believe me, I am as competitive as <laughs> the other three, but as we found out I about your basketball, so ping pong games are house. I do feel like yeah. I'm great. Or I'm chess. Great. Try to play a chess game or a ping pong game in our house. That's funny that you say that because a lot of people that you read about that are really you know stars and success, same way. Oh, you can't beat them. Doesn't matter if we're playing pinochle or we're playing chess. Yeah. Don't like to lose. I've become the loser. Because no. somebody has the loser. to lose, No, right? she hasn't been the <laughs> loser. Become loser. Tell you, I can assure you that's not a true statement. Uh, guys, did you play any games with your parents? Like, we play Monopoly with the grandkids and everything. You guys play any games? I, mean, I think the biggest thing is, um, you know, when we go away on vacation during the right. summer. Right, okay. Uh, one of our vacations is up in the Adirondack Mountains, and there's no TV, nothing, and it gets dark pretty quickly, so... You know, after six o'clock, there's nothing to do in the cabin besides just so. What do you do? Play games. So you know, we've had checkers, we've had uh, you know, backgammon, oh, card <laughs> games, good and, games to make you your know. brain work. Is a little anybody bit. Good. would would you consider your father, your mother, or your brother to be a sore loser? These two. Really? <laughs> okay. Are there any sore winners? Like, there's some people that are oh. bad winners. Both of them too. Both of them. Right? <laughs> right. That's it's funny true. because it's true. Yeah, yeah, worse than I am. <laughs> now, Colby, let me give you a retort here. What do you think? Are you you think you're a sore loser, sore winner? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, I think we just get so into it that. Okay. Right. And that lose. figures. That figures. All right. When Coach wow. Donardo is upset with you. Yes. Okay. It doesn't happen often. 
my, uh, I had one coach that was really special to me. And the meanest, the, the way he could get me in, inside my head, the, the most effectively he said, you know what? I thought you could have played better. So all he had to say, he didn't have to yell at me. He didn't have to scream at me. Okay, we've all had good games and great games. And Coach Donardo is a man of few words. I don't think I've heard him say a whole lot about anything. Okay? So what's the nicest thing he ever said to you? And how did, when he, how did he motivate you? When he wanted Troy Reader to play better, how would, what would he say to you, either pre-game or post-game, and when it wasn't such a successful performance that made you want to practice the next day harder than you ever had wanted to practice? No, I think for me, because I put so much stress on myself and because I, I feel that I know the game well enough that you know, I can go through a play and without a coach having to tell me or my dad have to tell me when I get home, I know what I did wrong. I know how I need to fix it. That you know, just a look of disappointment or just a look like, come on, you can do better than that is enough to just for me to see that. You, you know, know yourself. Yep. I you know you're a ever, lot of does he ever try to, you know, sometimes parents know you didn't play as well as you'd like to and they try to make you feel better by saying something that isn't necessary <laughs> true necessarily true, but but you're a good enough athlete to know when someone's blowing smoke, okay? I usually get the hard facts. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you get too much smoke. It's a good way to get it. Uh, you know, Dan, I was gonna ask you what you in all your endeavors, all the coaches that you came across, who gave the best motivational speech of all the coaches that you had? You know, Pro I don't college. remember ever sitting down for an emotional speech by any coach. And I was, I was an unemotional player. I'm with you. I'm but an unemotional. But, unemo but I, I can't know. remember. I had Chuck Knoll, who was a great coach. I had Tubby Raymond, who was a great coach. And both very bright men and great coaches. And Tom Flores in the Raiders, he was okay. But he yeah. wasn't much, you know, but uh, he was like a typical quarterback. You know, right, his right. Background. But Tubby was a great guy to play for. He knew what to say, when to say it to get you, to kind of get your juices flowing. Um, but they, 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 I never remember sitting down for a like big inspirational, let's, you know, let's I'm go with get you. them. I'm with you. No Grockney yeah, speech. Yeah, no, none, you know, none, you know. What about you, Cheryl? No, I don't remember. Um, I always thought it was smarts rather than, you know. I had some know, good coaches, but it never. Never sunk in. It was, no, it was great. What about no, you guys? You had to motivate yourself. Uh, yeah, You've my, had three or four coaches now. My lacrosse coach at Sally's, Coach Healy, um, he really focuses on, like a deeper message and throughout the years, mostly before I've been there, but uh, the families are still involved. We've had several, or one young uh, girl that has passed away and this is actually, uh, her name SP, Savannah Pauli and J.H. Joe Heim and you know, he, he always has a message that even though it may not be directly about sports or lacrosse, it just, Kind of gives you a little extra motivation. There's more important things in life out. than sports. For about uh, exactly. 12 years, uh, I sponsored the Axe Classic, which was the St. Mark Sally's uh, lacrosse game, and it was held at, at down at Rulo Stadium. Yes, and which is the, artificial. And the reason why we did that was twofold. <laughs> One, Matthew played for St. Mark's, and Jeremy played for Sally, so it seemed to be a, a way to have that interaction be a positive one. And I know for the longest time. That was something that both teams looked forward to, and we would always have a moment for Joe Heim uh, mm -hmm. prior to the game. And that's also where I got the chance to actually do the uh, work the mic and, and work those things, and that was always fun too. Is that still your biggest game? Is St. Mark's in lacrosse still your... your uh, and in football. It, well, in football, it is your biggest game. In football, it is. In lacrosse, you know, it kind of depends on the year. And who's uh, the better team? Right. Two years ago... Um, before the year before I got there, uh, we took a hard loss to Tower Hill in the state championship game, yeah. double overtime. That right. you know, the next year that was our biggest game, just getting, getting them back. back. And then yeah. we ended up playing them again in the state championship, and again that was a huge game. So you know, for us, it, it kind of changes, and we play a great out-of-state schedule as well. So that's important, I think. Yes. You know, that's important. Do you think that, uh, and I ask this to the kids the, that, that play out-of-state games, I think that teams become much better when they play, you know, other teams that are good, especially mm -hmm. Pennsylvania teams, New York teams. Do you feel the same way with lacrosse and football? I do. And uh, lacrosse especially just because there's not quite as many teams throughout Delaware that, right. you know, it's great for us to go out and play a national schedule. And uh, this year we have a uh, team from California coming to Sally's. That's kind of cool. So, yeah, Sally's does a great job of going right. out and doing that. Right. I want right. 
go to a different thing. Tell me, right now you're in the in between your junior and your senior year for football. Yes. Okay. Um, the kids out there have heard that you're going to be a Division One player. What is your workouts like? Is Colby involved? Is he working he out with you? Tell tell him what it's like to stay to to continue this to build the muscle and things like that. How many days a week do you work out? Uh, I mean, six really, sometimes seven, depending on, you know, one. How long are the workouts? My off day, I might have lacrosse, but, uh, you know, the summer, sometimes I'll have to go double sessions. I'll work out in the morning for about two and a half hours, and then I'll go to Sally's and work out for two hours. Mm. Um, I may uh, do some more skill work in between, just like linebacker-specific drills, running back-specific drills, uh, before I was throwing to my receivers, playing quarterback that... Is this coming to you too? Are you getting involved as well? Yes, it's it's great to have a family who knows what they're doing, working out, and wants to work out too. Yeah, you do. How about your guys' diet? We're we're down to thirty seconds. And you're not going to let anybody outwork you, right? No, sir. There you go. There you go. Well, thanks uh, thanks for coming down on this Thank very important Valentine's Day. Uh, we're glad that uh, the Reader family that came in and shared their ideas with us about what it's like to have a family that. The interacts obviously they like to play together. It's it's an athletic family that has an academic uh, stroke to it, and I'm sure that you'll enjoy watching this show. It'll be shown multiple times, uh, and we hope that you really take something away from this. Thank you guys for allowing me to orchestrate this. I appreciate it. What does opportunity mean to you? At Wilmington University, it means finding your relevance in the job market. That's why we offer career-oriented degree programs that meet employment needs in emerging fields. Dedicated professors bring their real-world experience into the classroom so you'll graduate with the tools you need to succeed on the job. It's your degree. Make it relevant to your career. Personalized education, affordable tuition, that's the difference at Wilmington University. This show was sponsored by ATI, the company taking physical therapy to a higher level throughout the country. First State Orthopedics, where youth and sports hosts Doctors Straight and Axe are members of the team taking care of Delaware with a commitment to excellence. And President Jack Barcelona and his Wilmington University College of Technology, where each semester this student-run program is produced, directed, edited, and distributed under the guidance of the TV production faculty. Each guest receives a copy of the show, and all shows are available on the web at youthandsports.com.